everybody, and welcome back to our series of companion guides for the Wheel of Time. Make sure to check out the previous videos in this series if you want a complete breakdown of how these videos are formatted, but here's the quick and dirty. The first section is spoiler free and will be a recap of the chapter, and it's designed for new readers who don't want to be spoiled with stuff that comes later. But we're going to add in some visuals and some other stuff to help you understand what you just read. The second section will be spoiler filled and we'll be focusing on foreshadowing, all the cool little information, breakdowns of the chapter. All that is designed for people who have already finished the series or are rereading them right now. I'll throw up a spoiler warning when we get to that section of the video. Quick thank you to audible.com for sponsoring this video series. You can get a free audiobook. All you have to do is click the link in the description of this video. You get a free book. It's awesome. So let's go ahead and get into the recap cap of chapter two of Eye of the World, titled Strangers. The chapter opens as Rand and Matt are unloading barrels of cider into the Winespring Inn. As they walk through the common room of the inn, they get to the cellar and they notice that most of the members of the village council are present, including Harl Luhan the blacksmith, Senbui the thatcher, John Thane the miller, Tam, and Bran. They appear to be waiting on the other members of the village council to arrive. Master Luhan gives Matt a nasty frown, making Rand think that he suspects Matt of being up to some mischief. As they pass near the kitchen where the door to the cellar is located, Mistress Alvir tells them that she will feed them honey cakes when they're done. Once they're in the cellar, Matt tells Rand that he played a prank on Aiden Alcar, Uwen Fingar, and Dag Coplin by coating the Luhan's dogs in flour and then telling the younger boys that they were ghost hounds. But rather than scaring the boys, they ran back to the Luhan's house and got flour all over the Luhan's home, which is why they're ticked. So they head back upstairs, back through the common room, and they get another load of cider, and notice that the final two members of the village council have arrived in Rowan Hearn and Semel Craw. They begin speaking quietly near the hearth in the common room, and Rand really can't hear what they're saying, so they just kind of move on. Rand and Matt continue to unload the casks of cider, and they take them to the cellar, and after taking one of the last casks to the basement, Ewan Fingar comes into the cellar to tell them about the strangers in the town. He tells them of the Lady Moraine and Lan, who he believes to be in service to Moraine. He also tells them that Nynaeve apparently does not like Moraine because she called Nynaeve child when asking for directions earlier. When they leave the cellar and head outside of the inn, Rand feels watched again, and he notices a raven perched on the roof of the inn and staring at him and Matt. Him and Matt throw stones at the raven, but it literally just sidesteps them, something that they've never seen a raven do before. As Rand and Matt discuss the strange acting raven, the Lady Moraine appears behind them and the raven flies away towards the mountains. Rand is very impressed with her. He's unable to put an age to her, but thinking that she looks like she's 20 and then sometimes she looks older than that. She's dressed nicer than anyone in the Two Rivers, even on a feast day. And he notices a golden ring in the shape of a great serpent on her finger. Rain introduces herself and asks them their names. When Rand and Matt and Ewan introduce themselves, she gives them all silver coins, although Matt and Rand get larger coins. And she tells them that she's paying them in advance for some tasks that she will need done while she's in the village. Rand asks her why she's come to the Two Rivers because they never get visitors like her. And she tells them that she's a collector of old stories and that there are many stories here in the Two Rivers. As Moraine leaves, Lan follows her and the boys are startled because they didn't even see him as they were talking to Moraine. Rand and Matt decide not to spend the coin that she gave them even though there is enough money there to possibly buy a horse in the Two Rivers and have money left over. After Rand's departure, they hear shouts and turn to see a crowd of villagers gathering on the green as the peddler's wagon comes over the bridge. So that's it for the recap. Now we're gonna get into the spoiler-filled section. So if you have not read all of the books, and yes, I mean all of them all the way up to A Memory of Light, watch at your own risk, you've been warned. So let's kick this off with foreshadowing. Even though this is a shorter chapter, there is actually quite a bit of foreshadowing in this chapter where we're introduced to Moraine for the first time, and she gives us a good amount of information. The raven that watches both Matt and Rand sidestepped the rocks they threw at it, something that they had never seen a raven do, but it immediately flies away in a hurry when Moraine approaches. Now this is clearly due to her being an Aes Sedai, something that we don't actually find out for another couple chapters. Now what's also interesting here is that the raven flies off towards the Mountains of Mist, Presumably, that's where the Murdral and Trollocs are camped in the woods, and it's flying off to report to the Murdral. After introducing herself to the boys, Moraine asks them their names, and once they give them, she hands them silver coins. Now, she gives a silver mark to Rand and Matt and a silver penny to Ewan. She tells the boys that there is a bond between them now, and we later find out that this is actually literal. 
The coins have a version of what we later find out to be called a finder on them, which creates a bond between Moraine and those coins and the boys that hold them. This allows Moraine to track their whereabouts and it actually bonds her to them. So she was speaking literally. You'll also notice that Moraine only hands the coins out once she hears their names. And this is because she's been asking around the village all day about boys that are around that specific age. So when she hears their name, she knows who she's looking for and she gives them the coins. That's also why she gives the smaller coin to Ewan because he's not one of the boys she's looking for, but that's more of a cover. Now, Maureen also gives a strangely cryptic answer when she's asked about why she came to the two rivers. She tells them that she collects stories, but when they ask her what stories she could find there, she says, as the wheel turns, Maureen said, half to herself and with a distant look in her eyes, places wear many names. Men wear many names, many faces different faces, but always the same man. Yet no one knows the great pattern the wheel weaves, or even the pattern of an age. We can only watch and study and hope. So this is clearly a reference to the Dragon Reborn being the true reason for her search, something that we don't truly find out about until the Great Hunt. As for the other general things from the chapter that are interesting, let's start with superstition and myths that are prevalent in the Two Rivers. When Matt and Rand start speculating that Lan might be a warder, they say he can't possibly be one because he would have gemmed armor and that warders only fight on the blight. And then they talk as though warders might not even be real. All of this is incorrect, but it goes to show how tales are spread over time and distance, which is one of the themes that Robert Jordan wanted to address in the books. In that same conversation, Matt mockingly says that there might be Trollocs in the Two Rivers, which, is, which wasn't a serious comment. The irony, though, is that there are Trollocs in the Two Rivers, and they're about to find that out in a very few hours. The last of the general comments I have here is about the money. Moraine gives Matt and Rand what we later find out to be a silver mark, and Ewan a silver penny. Now, a silver mark, Rand believes, would be enough to purchase a horse in the two rivers and have money left over. The thing to take from this is how frickin' wealthy Aes Sedai are. We find out in New Spring that they make 1,000 gold crowns a year, which is an absolute fortune, and they can get more if they want it. 10 silver marks are equal to a silver crown, and 10 silver crowns are equal to a gold mark, and 10 gold marks are equal to a gold crown. So based on Rand's pricing of a horse, Moraine could potentially purchase 1 million horses in the two rivers with just her yearly income, which that's not counting money that she saved or for money she's got from just being a noble. And yes, this is just a farming village, so maybe horses aren't that much, but that is an extravagant amount of money nonetheless. At the very least, I said I would all be equivalent to modern day millionaires in terms of their money, but it's possible that they might be wealthier than that. As for unanswered questions within the chapter, there are really only two that I think stand out. First, why wasn't Moraine more concerned about the Raven? She clearly saw it, and later in the book, she makes a comment about how she should have known. It seems odd that she would not have assumed that a raven that sidesteps a rock to watch the boys would not have been suspicious. Secondly, what was it that had both Moraine and the Shadow descending on the two rivers, and specifically Emmons Field, at the exact same time? Why did that just happen now? It seems odd that the two groups would be independently arriving at the same time in the same village after the same long search. I suppose it can be explained with Taviran, but I feel like it's still odd and it's never really addressed. So what did you think of the chapter Strangers? It's a shorter chapter, but there's a lot packed into it. Are there any other unanswered questions from the chapter or bits of foreshadowing that I missed? Let me know in the comments below. Also head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash nameless to get a free audiobook from the video sponsor audible.com wheel of time has an outstanding audiobook series and you can get a new one of those each month with the audible service which is great i have all of them make sure to like this video subscribe to the channel and watch all of the rest of the videos in this series i've got a playlist set up so you can binge all of these depending on when you're watching this there may be tons of videos after this in the playlist to watch so keep on going but hey thanks for everybody for watching and until next time peace out Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do Mistress up above, slipping on the rope of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?